creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. What do I have going on for you for today? Today I am bringing to you a subscriber request that I received, I would say probably about six or seven months ago. And when I received this request, I knew it was something that I could do. This subscriber requested a perpetual block desk calendar. When she asked for that, I thought, oh my goodness, my mind was just flooding with ideas and inspiration for what I could do for this. I am excited to bring you this perpetual block calendar because I love the way it turned out and I think you're really gonna like it too. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it and let me show you just how easy it is to make a perpetual block calendar using the Dollar Tree Jenga blocks and a couple of items from Walmart. I love this. For this DIY, you're gonna need a total of 96 of these blocks, not boxes, just 96 of the blocks themselves. And so because there's 36 blocks in each box, you're gonna need 2.6 boxes for this DIY. So we're just gonna say you need three boxes. For today's block DIY, I'm gonna do it a bit different than I've done my block DIYs in the past by just kind of setting it up like so. This is gonna be the base of our calendar. You're gonna need six rows of six blocks. We've got the two on the outside and we have four in the center. And you're also gonna need two rows of seven because this is gonna be the back. You're also gonna need eight single blocks as well. To glue this together, I'm gonna to be using Aileen's Tacky Glue because I personally have seen great results with using this glue. If you wanna use a wood glue or the Crafter Square wood glue, you can do that too. It really is just your preference. When gluing these together, I found the easiest way to do that is when you line them up in the sets that you need them to be glued in. If you just take and put a bit of glue on the side, place it in the back, pick another block up, put glue on that side, place it in the back, it really does move gluing the blocks together pretty quickly. I've also found that if you want a straight edge, that before that glue dries, if you just place it, up against a ruler and gently press, you're gonna get a nice straight edge. Then I'm gonna take my first row of six, I'm gonna place some glue on the side here and I'm gonna glue the two rows of six together just like you see here. Then I'm gonna take those four individual blocks, I'm gonna glue those along the side, kind of framing in these two blocks of six. Now when you do this, you're gonna need two sets of these blocks that I just glued together because we're gonna stack them on top of each other. So once you've glued everything together, you should again be left with these pieces. We've got the two rows of six on the side that are individual. We've got this center piece here where we've got two rows of six glued together framed with the blocks on the outside. We've got two of those that you're gonna glue together on top of each other. Then here at the bottom, we've got the two rows of seven that we've glued together side by side as well. Now to put this base together, I'm gonna put some glue on the short side of those two rows of seven, only one block high, and I'm gonna place some glue the full length of the long side as well, and I'm gonna place it on the base just like you see here. I'm also going to place the two rows of six on each side, just like you see me doing here. Now you'll see on the bottom here that this is where those four rows of six were glued together and we kind of framed it out. I wanted to do this a bit thicker just to kind of elevate the frame or the base, I guess, of this calendar. And so you can see it's real basic how I put it together. I think the important part is just giving you the numbers of blocks that need to be glued together. And so I'm gonna set this aside, I'm gonna let it dry and we're gonna move on to the blocks that are going to have the numbers on them. Now for these blocks, it was easiest just to go with five rows of three blocks per number block. And so you're gonna need a total of three rows of 10. Now when putting these together, I went ahead and glued the three sets of blocks together opposite as I stacked them. 
and I feel like it just kind of made it look better. I didn't really like the look of stacking them all in the right direction and so I think that it just kind of looked better. That was just my preference. Might be silly, might not be, but I think it also makes it a bit sturdier and so when gluing these sets of three together you're going to again glue five sets of three together per block. And these here will be the number blocks to change the date. For the months, I am gonna go with four individual blocks and instead of gluing them side by side, like I usually do on the small side, we're gonna put glue on the wide side of the block and kind of sandwich them together like this. And I'm gonna do this with two sets of blocks because we need it to be a bit longer and I wanted it to be a bit thicker. And so by doing this, it's gonna give us a nice even space all around. I show that I made four of these blocks, but in actuality, you're gonna need five because there was a space in back of the base that I just wasn't happy with. To paint these, I will be using some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of white, and I'm gonna give all of these pieces here, the months and the number blocks, a good couple coats of this paint. For the base, I'll be going with Waverly's chalk paint in the color of ink because for this DIY, this farmhouse DIY, I'm going with that black and white farmhouse feel. Now how cute is this? Walmart has a bunch of these wood farm animals in their craft section. I saw a rooster, a pig, a cow, and yes, I did pick them all up. So for this DIY, I thought I'd go with the cow because I do have a couple of farmhouse cows in my kitchen above my, I guess, cabinets. And so I'm gonna use this as an embellishment to the base of our calendar and I'm gonna give this a good coat of the black paint as well. Now these here are the pieces that you should be left with and you can see here that I do have five of these month blocks because yeah, I needed to kinda alter that just a bit and we've got the two number blocks here and we've got the base and wait for it we also have that adorable cow as well that is going to go on the top of this base to do the numbers for the blocks i'm using these stickers that i believe i got at walmart or hobby lobby they're very inexpensive if you have a cricut you can use a cricut dollar tree has some amazing numbers out now too they're the poster stickers and so these are the ones that I'm gonna use. I really like the font. So when placing these numbers on the block, there are specific numbers that have to go on each block. So it's not necessarily gonna be in order and you're not gonna have all the numbers on each block if that makes any sense. And so to cover all of the dates in the month, on this first block, you need to have zero, one, two, four, seven, and eight on this first block. And on the second block, you're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3. You're also going to have 5. And on the other end, you're going to have the 6. But the 6 is also going to be used as the 9. This is one of those times where I felt like these blocks were just a bit too plain. So taking my sponge dabber, I thought it would really add character to these blocks just by outlining each of the edges with the black paint. And really using a sponge dabber is the easiest way to do it. If you try to use a paintbrush, it just doesn't go on very smoothly. You're gonna get a lot of those brush marks. And so by using some kind of a sponge, you can see that it moves along pretty quickly and you can add some detailed edges pretty easily. And I'm gonna do this to both of the blocks. Now for the months of the year, on these blocks here, I will be using these sticker letters. These are a pretty, generic letter. You can find these just about anywhere. I think even Dollar Tree has these, to be honest. And so I liked the size, I liked the font, and these are gonna work perfectly. For each of these months, I found that if you start off with the center letter and place it right where the two sets of blocks meet, your months are going to be centered perfectly on the block. And so for this, block I am starting off with January and you can see that I started with the U and then I can just kind of work my way out on both sides evenly spacing it and yeah it's gonna be centered I am happy with how this looks and again this sticker size was the perfect size for these 
Again, I'm going to outline the edges of the month blocks because we can't have the date blocks outlined and not the month ones. And so yeah, I'm going to do that too to all five of the blocks. To seal the stickers onto these blocks, I will be using some of Waverly's varnish in the matte finish. And I'm just going to give the number blocks a good coating of this and the month blocks. Because my worry with this is that when you use stickers, I know that because I have a swamp cooler, the air tends to be moist and sometimes it can cause some of the stickers to peel up or roll, curl up. And so I didn't want that to happen and I know a lot of times just in general using stickers, they can come off and I didn't want that to happen and so just by putting this Waverly varnish sealant on top, it's going to prevent that from happening. Now I know that Dollar Tree does sell real small perpetual block calendars, but honestly they're not my decor style. You could probably take one and DIY it and paint it and turn it from something bleak to chic to suit your decor, but I think that for under $5 we just made our own using Dollar Tree's Jenga blocks and I just love the outcome of this. This is a nice wood looking one. I think that this would make for a great gift to give. And again, like I said, it's a very versatile piece and it's one that can be done to suit any decor style. Now, we can't forget the cow. The cow, I'm gonna place just a bit of glue on its hooves. Yeah, we'll call it that, its hooves. And I'm gonna place it right here on the top and I think that this is the perfect finishing touch to this calendar. So I say get creative, go pick yourself up a couple two, three boxes of Dollar Tree's Jenga blocks and some stickers and make yourself a perpetual block calendar for 2021 and even gift it out. And if you make these, post it on my Facebook page because I'd love to see your creation. Oh my word. Yes, it is that time of the week where Kayla is uploading one of her videos and this week she has got a treat for you all. So many of you loved her voiceover when she did my Dollar Tree Star DIY. Yep, she's got another voiceover for you this week. If you thought that one was funny, wait until you see the voiceover or hear the voiceover that she does this week. You are not going to want to miss it. The link to her video you can find in my description box below. How fun is this calendar? I gotta tell you, I am gonna say it. I love the outcome of this. I love how rustic and farmhouse it is just by adding that wood cow to the top. And really, this is one of those DIYs that is a very versatile piece that can very easily be done to suit any decor style just by changing the paint color, maybe the font of the sticker, and maybe adding a different embellishment to the top if you wanted to add one, if any. I hope you all enjoyed this subscriber request and what I came up with for a perpetual block calendar using items from the Dollar Tree. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget and bye for now, everybody.